had a lot of students in the past and they always like freak out when they go into exam and it's a paper one exam and then they come back after the test and they're like sir they had paper two content why are they doing this to us guys they are sometimes going to do that um but it's usually not going to be that difficult they're just putting in a little bit of paper two work in the paper one work it can happen okay so don't be surprised when it happens it can happen and it probably will happen so it says yeah consider the sequence and then they give us the first three numbers then it says determine the values of x for which the sequence is arithmetic now we know that when they ask a question like this it normally looks like this they'll do something like 2x minus 8 and then 3x plus 6 and then they'll say find the values of x if this sequence is arithmetic then we should always say that term 2 minus term 1 is equal to term 3 minus term 2 that is what we would normally do in order to determine x if it is or arithmetic here they have told us that it is or arithmetic so i'm going to use the same approach and let's see how that goes so we're going to say term 2 minus term 1 must be the same as term 3 minus term 2 that's because it's arithmetic so term 2 is going to be 2 sin 3x minus term 1 which is minus 11 and that's equal to term 3 minus term 2 okay just going to simplify this a little bit Guys, mustn't panic if you see something like this. Just go with it. So what we can do is take the minus 2 sin 3 to the left. And so that's going to become positive. So we're going to end up with 4 sin 3x. Uh, and then on the other side, we're going to have 15 minus 11, which is 4. Then we can divide by 4. So we end up with sin 3x equals to 1. And now all of a sudden, we have entered the area of general solution, specific solution, you know, the one where you have to get your reference angles and all of that stuff. Well, that is what we now have to do. Now, there are two different methods that we could use right now, and I don't want to confuse anyone. So some of you, and this is how I teach some of my personal or private students, um, whenever they give you a sin or a cause, and they make it equal to either a one, a zero, or a minus one. I don't like to solve that using reference angles. I rather solve that using the graph. Because if I draw a sin graph, then it's very easy to um, it's very easy to see where the graph is supposed to be equal to one. It's supposed to be equal to one over there. Okay. But then there's other students that would maybe like to use the reference angle approach. Okay. So yeah there's two different methods let me let me quickly in fact let me do both because i know that there's two different types of students who are watching this well there's more than two of you but two groups of students okay so for the first method i'm just going to draw the graph and it's a normal sin graph yes i know there's a 3x there but we'll fix that up just now okay so i know that the sin graph is equal to one at 90 degrees over here and then I know that that will probably repeat again over here. And so that means we are repeating every 360 degrees. That's how often it repeats. So I could now say that 3x, 3x is equal to, and I'm going to use the other method now. So if you're feeling a bit confused, I'll show you another method now, is equal to the first angle, which is 90. And then I say plus k times 360. K is an element of Z. Your teacher might use an N over there. That's okay. I used to use N as well. It doesn't really matter. Use whatever you're comfortable with. Then we can divide by three. And so that's going to give us 30 degrees plus K times 120. K is an element of Z. And so that's literally the answer. So they said, find all the values of X in the interval of zero to 90. So that means that if I make X equal, if I make K equal to zero, then that means X will give me 30. And if I make X equal to one, I mean, if I make K equal to one, then I'm probably going to get an answer that's too big. Because that gives me 150. And that is too big because they only want the answers between zero and 90. Okay.
Um, right. So now if you prefer not to use the graph, I know some students don't even know about the graph method. Maybe your teacher hasn't done that one with you. So then what you guys would do, um, so let me quickly say here that this is a alternative approach. Alternative. Geez, I'm glad I'm not an English teacher. Alternative uh, approach. So what you would do is you would say sin 3x is equal to 1. And then you would go get the reference angle on your calculator. So the reference angle would be when you say sin minus 1 on your calculator of 1. And that would give you 90 degrees. And then you would say that sin is positive in quadrant number 1 and quadrant number 2. So quadrant number 1. And then I'll do quadrant number two over here. So for quadrant number one, you would say that 3x is equal to 90 plus k times 360. And so x would be equal to 30 plus k times 120. And then for quadrant number two, then you would say that 3x is equal to 180 minus the reference angle. And so that would give you 3x is equal to 90 plus k times 360. You see how we're getting the same answers, guys? And that is why I don't really like using this method because it's very repetitive. You see, we're getting uh, that as the same and that as the same. Um, so I like to use the graph method, but this method does work. And so we're going to end up with 30 plus K times 120. So we're getting a bit of a repetition happening. So the final answer for this question is literally only going to be X equals to 30.